U.S. just declared all-out war on China's tech industry as the Trump administration escalates the chip war, and China is fighting back harder than anyone expected. The Trump administration just ordered American tech giants, Synopsys, Cadence, and Siemens EDA, to cut off China from advanced chip design software. But here's the crazy part. This was supposed to crush China's tech dreams forever. Back in 2019, the U.S. thought it had China on the ropes, blocking Huawei, SMIC, and others from getting critical chips and tech. Washington laughed, thinking China would collapse without American know-how. They were wrong. Instead of crumbling, China doubled down, and now they're winning. Their tech giants aren't just surviving, they're dominating, building their own chips faster than anyone predicted. Besides, China just made history with the first carbon nanotube transistor, the first of its kind in the world. It is advancements like this that scares the United States. Is the U.S. too late? Has China already won the semiconductor war? Stick around, because this battle is far from over. Before we proceed, please hit the like and subscribe button and let's get into the details. The latest development in the U.S.-China chip war is a fresh order from the Trump administration to top U.S. companies, Synopsys, Cadence Design Systems, and Siemens EDA, to halt the sale of advanced software to Chinese firms. This order came from the U.S. Department of Commerce's Bureau of Industry and Security. The goal is to block China's access to essential tools for designing semiconductors, effectively using microchips as a weapon in the ongoing tech war between the U.S. and China. These tools, called Electronic Design Automation, EDA software, are vital for making modern computer chips, which are used in everything from smartphones to fighter jets. Synopsys and Cadence control about 74% of the global market for these tools. Siemens EDA, formerly known as Mentor Graphics, also has a major share. By cutting China off from these tools, the U.S. is disrupting China's path toward building its own strong chip industry. The entire production line starts with this EDA. If companies like Cadence and Synopsys refuse to supply this automation design software, then manufacturers cannot move to the other stages of chip production. For years, China has invested billions into building its chip industry. Its plan is to become self-sufficient and not rely on Western tech. Companies like Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, are state-backed and central to this effort. Despite programs like Made in China 2025, the country is still far behind in designing and manufacturing advanced chips. As of the end of 2024, China's technology in this field is five generations behind global leaders, especially in areas like artificial intelligence and high-end manufacturing machines. But now the United States is realizing that China is not so far behind. In January 2025, China shocked the tech world when DeepSeek AI launched a powerful new artificial intelligence model, DeepSeek R10528, developed in just two months using 2,000 NVIDIA chips and only $5.6 million. This breakthrough stunned U.S. tech giants and proved that China was much closer to the front of the AI and chip race than previously thought. More importantly, it demonstrated that advanced AI models could now be trained far faster and cheaper, revealing that China had discovered more efficient, cost-effective paths to high-level system development. This was a real threat to U.S. tech companies that valued their AI projects at hundreds of billions of dollars. China had exposed them to be overvalued, and this revelation meant investors realized their investments was not worth as much as they thought. The financial markets reacted instantly. NVIDIA's stock dropped 17%, wiping out $600 billion in value, the biggest one-day loss in U.S. history. Google lost $100 billion, and Microsoft lost $7 billion. This was called a Sputnik moment, similar to when the U.S. was shocked by the Soviet space launch in the 1950s. People started to worry. Is China now ahead in AI and chip making? But how did China suddenly get so good at making chips? China has been working hard to build its own chip-making industry. SEMIC has made fast progress. In 2019, SMIC could only make 14 nanometer chips. But by 2021, 
It was already making 7 nanometer chips, and by 2024, it was preparing to produce 5 nanometer chips. They managed this using a process called DUV, or Deep Ultraviolet Lithography, with extra techniques like self-aligned quadruple patterning, all without needing the most advanced foreign tools. Another Chinese company, SMEE, Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, is helping by building China's own lithography machines. Their SSA 800 scanner can now make 28 nanometer chips, and they've also filed a patent for EUV lithography, the same type used by top Dutch company ASML. This means China is trying to match the best in the world. Despite making so much progress, China still needs the EDA that the United States control. Losing access to EDA software could delay China's progress by five to seven years, or longer. Without these tools, it becomes extremely hard to design or build competitive chips. This could cripple China's ambitions in key fields like AI, defense, and telecommunications. What is fueling this escalation is the current tariff war stated by the Trump administration. Remember, in May, the US and China agreed to temporarily lower trade tariffs, reducing them significantly to 30% and 10% to ease tensions and allow room for renewed negotiations. But while trade tensions have cooled slightly, the real fight has moved to technology. The US is now saying that national security includes anything where China might get ahead of America. That's why Chinese firms like Huawei, ZTE, and DJI have been blacklisted. This recent move isn't based on any proven wrongdoing. In fact, there's no public evidence that Synopsys, Cadence, or Siemens Chinese clients have done anything wrong. The US is acting preemptively doing its best to ensure that China does not catch up to the United States in terms of technological capabilities. Naturally, the most affected party are the companies across the United States and China that have been doing business with each other. To protect themselves, the companies involved have reacted carefully. Synopsys and Cadence have chosen not to comment. Siemens has confirmed the restrictions but says it will try to reduce the impact on customers around the world. But the financial risks are serious. Synopsys gets 16% of its revenue from China, and Cadence gets even more, 12%. Siemens EDA has many clients in Asia, including Chinese companies in the civilian and commercial sectors. Cutting off access to their software can delay entire chip development projects, affecting everything from smartphones to military hardware. This latest restriction could backfire just like the previous chip restrictions the U.S. placed on China in the past. Anytime the United States steps in to stop the progress of China, it has been a recurring pattern that the Chinese then go on to develop their own independent technology. So could that happen again? Interestingly, China could already be ahead of these restrictions coming from the Trump administration. Past sanctions forced China to go all in on semiconductor independence. Beijing responded with a massive industrial policy push, pouring billions into domestic chip research, subsidizing local manufacturers, and aggressively recruiting top global talent. Beijing is not leaving this to chance. The Chinese government has declared semiconductor self-sufficiency a national priority, launching the big fund officially called the National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund with $48 billion allocated to domestic chip development. This funding is fueling rapid advancements in several key areas. China is aggressively backing RISC-V, an open-source chip architecture that bypasses Western-controlled standards like ARM and x86. Companies like Alibaba and Huawei are already designing RISC-V processors, and Beijing aims to make this architecture the backbone of its domestic chip ecosystem. Since cutting-edge fabrication remains a challenge, China is investing heavily in advanced packaging techniques like chiplet technology, which allows multiple smaller chips to function as one. This could help Chinese firms compensate for lagging process nodes by improving performance through innovative design. U.S. officials are now facing an uncomfortable truth. Instead of slowing China down, the sanctions may have actually sped up its push for tech independence. A recent report from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, said China could reach 50% self-sufficiency in chipmaking as early as 2025, 
and possibly hit 70% by 2027, much sooner than expected. Even more concerning for Washington is the possibility that China could soon leapfrog traditional semiconductor paradigms entirely. Researchers at the Chinese Academy of Sciences are exploring next-generation technologies like photonic chips and carbon nanotube transistors, breakthroughs that could render silicon-based chips obsolete. If China corners these emerging markets, the U.S. could find itself playing catch-up in a post-silicon world. So far, China has responded calmly but firmly. Liu Pengyu, the spokesperson for China's embassy in Washington, said Beijing would defend the rights of Chinese companies. Chinese media have hinted at possible retaliation. China might blacklist American aerospace and chemical companies, especially those that sell jet engines. In April, China halted these restrictions. But with the escalation going on, it is likely Beijing will resume trade restrictions with related U.S. companies. It could also tighten control over rare earth exports. China processes over 90% of the world's rare earths, which are critical for electronics and weapon systems in the U.S. This tech war is not going away anytime soon. The U.S. keeps tightening export controls, and China is spending heavily on research and development to catch up. The world may be heading toward a future with two separate tech ecosystems, one led by the U.S. and the other by China. This unfolding saga is not just a bilateral matter, it has global implications. If the U.S. insists on unilateral restrictions, it risks alienating key allies who have their own economic ties to China. European firms like ASML, ST Microelectronics, and Infineon, Japanese giants like Tokyo Electron, and South Korean firms like Samsung all operate at the intersection of Western technology and Chinese demand. Already, a fragmented export control regime is taking shape. In 2024, Japan and the Netherlands joined the U.S. in restricting advanced chip equipment exports to China, but under pressure from their own industries, their rules are more narrowly targeted. A blanket ban on EDA software could deepen the split. Moreover, this hardening of tech borders risks the formation of two incompatible ecosystems, an American-led bloc and a Chinese-led alternative, with separate standards, chip architectures, and supply chains. For global firms, this means duplicated R&D, higher costs, and the end of the efficiency dividends that globalization once promised. Is the world prepared for a Cold War 2.0, this time in Silicon? To resolve this growing tension, a truce was enacted in Geneva, which was meant to create space for a broader US-China agreement. Unfortunately, this truce is set to expire in August. Optimists hope this gives both nations time to cool heads and negotiate a more durable economic framework. But the decision to escalate via export controls mid-truce suggests the Trump administration is less interested in peace than in supremacy. Trump has already claimed that China has violated the Geneva deal it signed with the U.S. just weeks ago. Specifically, this deal was meant to pause the tariff war and ensure the flow of rare earth minerals. Trump claims Beijing totally violated the agreement by holding back shipments of rare earths, critical materials used in everything from smartphones and fighter jets to electric cars and missiles. The U.S. was supposed to stop all sanctions and tariffs, and in return, China was supposed to resume exports of rare earth minerals, which the U.S. economy and military depend on. But instead of opening the gates, Trump claims that China has quietly slowed down the process delaying export licenses. Without those materials, American factories could grind to a halt. And fast. And it's happening right when the U.S. is trying to squeeze China with export bans on tech giants like Huawei. It looks like China is hitting back, not with bombs, but with the materials that power America's high-tech weapons and industries. Here's the terrifying part. If China keeps blocking rare earth exports, the U.S. may be forced to restart tariffs, or worse, dig in for another full-blown trade war. Automakers, chip producers, and even defense contractors are already sounding the alarm. The risk is that China, feeling cornered, will retaliate not just through tariffs or blacklists, but through currency devaluation, restrictions on U.S. firms in China, 
or by doubling down on its Belt and Road alliances. Already, Beijing is pivoting to BRICS plus ASEAN and Africa to offset Western dependence. If the trade talks collapse, the chip war could become the blueprint for a broader economic decoupling, with devastating consequences for global innovation, growth, and cooperation. What's the endgame in a world where progress itself becomes a threat? Subscribe now for clear, focused updates, because the consequences of these decisions will shape the global economy for a generation.